probably the first time I met Ernie Harwell as a member of the Detroit Tigers, as my being a member of the Detroit Tigers, was in early 2004 when I got hired by the Tigers. And I went up and saw him in the lunchroom, and I introduced myself, and I said, I'm Bob Bergeels. I'm the public address announcer. And he had kind of a quizzical look on his face. He said, from Temperance, Michigan? He said, you look uh, quite young for someone who saw Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig in the 1929 Yankees. And then it dawned on me he was referring to my dad, who had the same name, who my dad and Ernie Harwell wrote back and forth to each other. My dad was a big Tigers fan. And, and just recently I found those letters from Ernie Harwell to my dad. So very, uh, uh, a, a real uh, treasure to be able to find those because I was looking for something else. But then in 2005 at the All-Star Game, it was a, a real treat for me to be able to introduce Ernie Harwell to the crowd because he did an inning of the All-Star Game. And, and what I'll never forget is I, ladies and gentlemen, to do the sixth inning of the game, Detroit's legendary broadcaster, Ernie Harwell. And then he was, of course, on ESPN or whoever did the All-Star Game that year. And I'll never forget, we have a certain amount of time that you have to introduce a batter to get into the, the box because the, the commercials are done and they're coming back. And we went past that time. And the crowd was standing. And I can hear the director yelling at me, introduce the batter, because everything starts once you introduce, introduce the batter. And the fans were going crazy. And the, the batter was to be Aramis Ramirez, who at the time was with the Cubs. And I remember looking down, and he was standing there. And he looked up, and he started to clap. And the players on the field were clapping. And some of the players came out of the dugout, and they were clapping. And the director kept yelling, introduce the batter and I couldn't do that I I couldn't take that Detroit moment away that's a nationally they might not have understood it but everybody in that ballpark there were 42,000 people in there that night everybody from Michigan and Ohio and Tiger fans who were there they understood what that meant and I I, I couldn't take that away uh, and then the last time I introduced him, I've introduced Mr. Harwell probably six, seven, eight times, because a lot of times he'd come with the Blue Cross Blue Shield people, and then they'd walk on the field uh, before the game for Blue Cross Day. But uh, the last time I introduced him was last September when they had the Ernie Harwell Day. And um, that was one of those times I almost asked the director if I could record it uh, before the game, and then you just play it. I said, no, uh, I, I didn't know if I could get through it. We all knew that Ernie was, was not feeling well and that this was probably going to be the end. Uh, and I've listened to him all those years. And then it came to me to, to introduce him one last time at Comerica Park. And that wasn't the toughest thing. The toughest thing was coming on after Mr. Harwell had spoken and introducing the next batter. Um, you just don't want to talk. You know, it's, it's Mr. Harwell's moment. You know, Baseball was suspended for that. It was about 100 seconds he talked, maybe two minutes. It wasn't very long, but it was very, very powerful. And he just didn't know when to, when to talk next. It was one of those really surreal moments. How about when you found out yesterday about his passing? What, you know, what, what's going through your mind? What, what are some of the things that you thought about having over the past? I was watching the Red Wings game. And between periods, Mickey York came on, and, and just the way he looked on, on television, and he said, and we have some bad news to pass along. And, and I knew exactly when he said that. I, I, I knew what would come next. And it brought back a lot of memories. You know, Ernie was the voice of summer for all of us. And, and I was born in Toledo and grew up in Monroe County, Michigan. And so it was always Mr. Hartwell. Uh, I go back to 1960. I saw my first game in Tiger Stadium in 1960, September 1960. And he was already there. Um, but to be able to hear all of the games he did and, and to remember back in 1967 when the riots were going on, but it was, it was his voice that was kind of the steadying influence. And in 68 when the Tigers won it all, and um, it was just kind of always he was this voice that was when you heard that voice, it was summer, and it was the Tigers. And uh, uh, it's interesting, uh, broadcasters aren't probably as identified with teams as maybe players are, but Ernie was a Tiger. You know, a lot of people forget that he did National League games and he did Baltimore Oriole games before he got to Detroit, but for 42 years, he was a Tiger. 
And uh, to be able to hear some of those things. And, and you know what, one of the biggest excitements for me when the Toledo Mud Hens came to town in 65 and 66, it was really fun for me when the Tigers would play the Yankees later because I would get to hear the names of some of the Mud Hens who had gone up to the Yankees play against the Tigers and Ernie Harwell would, would talk about them. And then in 67 and 68 when the Tigers actually got to Toledo and then there was Mike Marshall and there was Dick Drago and there were some of those other guys who went up with the Tigers and to get to hear Ernie Harwell say their names. Wow, guys who were my heroes. Uh, I'll never forget Mike Hegan was always my favorite uh, mud hen. And uh, the first time Mike Hegan played for the Yankees against the Tigers. Wow, that was really cool to hear Ernie Harwell talk about Mike Hegan in the major leagues. And Bobby Mercer, too, when Bobby Mercer went from the Mud Hens to the Yankees. How about your biggest memory as a, a listener, as a fan listening to him broadcast the game? It was in August, no, September, September 1968, the day that Denny McLean won his 30th game. We were on our way to Kalamazoo. My dad had an old Navy buddy. Uh, who had a, cat, uh, a cottage in Kalamazoo, and we were on our way, and we were listening to the game on WKZO in Kalamazoo, and sure enough, uh, Denny McLean won his 30th game. It was a Saturday afternoon. He was already out of the game, and the Tigers came back to win it after he was out of the game, but uh, I remember uh, Mr. Harwell describing the game, and, and then they had Denny McLean on there, and they talked to Dizzy Dean, who the last man before Denny McLean to win 30, he was there. And that's probably my most memorable uh, experience because we heard it in a car. We were in a different place in the state of Michigan, but it was still Ernie Harwell. How about is there anything that you might have got to see or know about Ernie Harwell that some people may not know? He was active just about up to the end. And I think I know that because of my association with the Tigers and, and the, the, the Blue Cross uh, connection because he did the walking, and, and golly, he, he was, it wasn't this season, obviously, but uh, early last season, he was at the ballpark walking with the, the Blue Cross people, and a lot of people don't realize that he stayed so active. But he was an author first, and I have got a number of things that he's written, uh, but it's, um, he was, uh, he was the voice of the Tigers, you know, there, uh, Dan Dickerson one day will be remembered like Mr. Harwell is now, uh, but for now it's Ernie. All right, anything else? One other thing. When I first started uh, with the Tigers in 2004, I would go into the lunchroom, and sure enough, there'd be a lot of the reporters who I knew and, and TV people and radio people. and. It was such a thrill to see major league people in major league parks. And whenever I would see Mr. Harwell there having lunch or dinner or whatever it was before the game, even though I was supposed to go back where I would prepare for the game, I would sit at a table nearby and I would listen to his stories. And it was like a, an audio book of, of stories about baseball. And, and then when he would sit down with uh, Mr. Devilano, who put together the Red Wings and who signed a lot of players who ultimately played for the Toledo Storm, uh, to be able to listen to those two guys talk. Uh, Ernie Harwell baseball and Jimmy Devilano hockey. Uh, what, a, what a thrill that was. I, I might be an announcer, and, and, and I'm very lucky to be in the major leagues. I, I worked hard to get there, but I'm still very fortunate to be there. But I'm a fan first. And even when, even when I don't sit behind a microphone ever again, I'll always be a fan. And to be able to hear those stories from those guys, how lucky am I?